you, amen, for coming on this morning. Amen. We have sort of a new order of service this morning. We, our hospitality person and uh, choir director and drama and, and all are gone. We had bereavement in the family, the Gamma family in Georgia. And so my, my brother, uh, my brother's daughter's son died uh, unexpectedly, I guess around, it was 38, something of that nature. Yeah, your brother's daughter's husband. Husband, yeah, the husband uh, passed away, which is my aunt's, I mean, my niece's husband uh, passed away. I guess he was around 38, rather unsuddenly. No was expecting. He was, as I said, Wednesday, he was cutting grass and fell dead. So uh, we understand that he died of a stroke, but he was saved. Amen. So it's a time, amen, I know often we bereave, but I understand that the funeral was beautiful, amen. He he lived what he walked, and he was my brother's adjutant. Yes. Uh, so I know that he would be greatly missed, amen. And so, but, the, but our hope is in Jesus. Amen. When others have hope in their mother and they have faith in their father but we need to have hope in jesus amen amen, amen. who is the author and the finisher of our faith so we're going to continue i uh I, I i would i told sister Gloria, administrator that we're going to continue to sing today in spite of the fact that they're not here all right i have told my deacons and my ministers and my deaconettes to be prepared at all times because you never know what life brings all right. and you may have to preach all right. and uh don't say i'm not ready because i've told you far in advance you should always have a sermon i don't want to hear okay and you're going to hear from me now you come up telling me i'm not ready all right i'm going to say i have told you time and time again deacons be ready at all times. Look at this. Be ready, be ready at all times. Time. And so I may have decided to go to Georgia. What if I decided to go? I wonder if there's anybody that I could call up at a moment's notice and say, I need you to preach for me today, Jamal. I don't want to hear, I, 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 don't want to hear that. Okay. And that's the same way for the choir. If the choir director is not here, that doesn't mean the choir's not going to sing. All right. uh -huh. That just means you always got to have a backup plan Amen. in case something happens. Isn't that right? right. So, uh, Elder uh, Deacon Eddie, make sure that you are ready all and time. prepared. He said all time. I don't know what I'm talking about. Right. I might call on him next week. Be, be <laughs> ready to give a call. The Bible said give an answer to them that ask. So we want you to make sure that you are prepared in case. Uh, my my grandmother used to say, Mother Gamma, all the time, one monkey don't stop the show. And oftentimes churches are often crippled because the lead director comes in late. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. You know, church started at 11, but they come in at 1130 in the pastor waiting on the director uh -uh, not happening up in him mm -hmm. no we're not waiting on anybody all right. amen if the musician late we're gonna sing a cappella right. uh, until i find another musician right. uh, <laughs> that's just the way it is i uh, know no no one person and it shouldn't be right. because ain't one, no one person is the church right. no one person should have monopoly over the service yeah. can i get an amen, amen. Amen. I didn't mean to say all of that, but anyway, we are still having our praise and worship team. Let's give God a praise for our praise and worship team. Father, we're going to have our elder, our deacon, uh, Eddie, come at this time to welcome us here in the presence of the Lord, followed by Sister uh, Deaconette Hayes, Deaconette Hayes, uh, Deaconette Hayeswood coming followed with scripture let's give god a praise in house come on deacon come on welcome us in the house of the lord amen, amen. thank you good morning everyone good morning. first giving honor to the spirit of christ this morning to my beloved pastor dr gamble oh, amen to that's not this time about first lady 
the absence of Ella Jackson and his wife, to the absence of Mr. Ken and his wife, to the absence of Minister Valerie and the other husband, Deacon Nick, amen, to uh, Deacon King and his wife, Deacon Hazelwood and his wife, to Father and Mother Gamble, to Mother Green, to Mother Flight this morning, amen, and to all of my Manifest Brothers Church family. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. And to our young people, too, good morning. You know, I thank God, amen, for what the pastor said, because that was just the way that I was taught in church. Mm -hmm. Always, if you uh, call on to do something, be ready. Right. Be ready. If somebody calls on you to do something for them, you say you're ready. Well, what about God? All right. He's more important than anybody else, you know. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that. Why? He sustains you. Right. Don't be for him, you wouldn't be him. So now let us welcome in the Holy Spirit this morning. Thank you, and let him know that we are grateful yeah. for everything that he's done for us. Hallelujah. Now we don't have any visitors this morning, but now we have got to compare men and women to come. Yeah. Because that's God's commission to us. We're not doing God a favor. Let's get that out of our mind. We are doing his work because we were created to worship, praise, and do his work. Amen. That's our job in life. Amen. We want to always say, well, it's my job to take care of my wife and my children. Yes. But God comes first. Amen. And when we learn that, we're going to be a better people. So now let us be about our father's business. His business comes first. When you pay your tithes, he don't want what's left over. He wants the first part. Amen. And that's what you do. That's what I do. And he's blessed me tremendously for doing it. And I praise him for it every day. Amen. When I, when I wake up in the morning, Lord, I thank you for another day. Because guess what? It sure wasn't another brother digging in it. I don't sustain myself, but it's God that sustains me, and I praise him for it. So now let us remember about our uh, membership drive, and let's be about our Father's business. Amen. And welcome into this place this morning. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dee. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. This morning, y'all, starting last night, the devil tried to get in my head and tell me, Oh, take day off. <laughs> you know you're supposed to be working there other <laughs> Sunday. Take day off. I said, no. <laughs> I didn't know why. But I see now, because this is where I need to be. You're in right. Jesus' name, every day. I need you're to right. be every day more than anybody. Lord have mercy. I just want to thank Jesus for waking me up this morning yeah. to yeah. see my family. Yeah. Yeah. Not just my immediate family, my church family. I love y'all yeah. with all my heart. And I don't know why I'm saying this. I don't know what God's putting on my mind this morning. But my sister law ain't doing too good, y'all. I'm a little worried about it. Not that she's not saved. I just don't want to lose her. Yeah. Something's going on. We just need to pray for her a little harder, give her a little all more right. strength. She have a good yeah. days. And she have a down days. Yes. But she missed y'all. Yes, yes. She, she does. does. And I told her I was going to say this about her. So she, she wants to come. But anyway, I don't know what Pastor said about being prepared. Now that's in my mind too. Because I know he will call me. Okay, and I'll be ready. But that was on my mind too. It said, now you know, you might have to go up there and do something. You know, few Sundays on August the 30th. I got that. Okay, so I'm thinking on something that I got to do, and I'm not sure, but I thought about doing it, preparing last week, just for today. All right. I'm, I'm telling you, God working with me, y'all, because yeah. the devil, he, he on me. All right. I ain't giving him an inch. Well, he ain't got right. no space in my head well, at yeah. all yeah. to play with. Yeah. I refuse yeah. to let him get there, yeah. period. Yeah. No matter what I'm going through, what it look like, what it All feel right. like, I say, thank you, Jesus. Yeah, I look at my house and my family. I like, something I come in the house. I say, y'all didn't clean no dishes. Y'all didn't cook no food. What y'all doing? 
I come in, I do it all, and I was like, Lord, if it wasn't for you, ain't no way I could do this every day. All right. It's hard, but he ain't never said it was going to be easy. He said, oh, yeah. I'll be there, and I would never forsake you. Yeah. I believe him. I trust him. Took me a long time to get here, but can't nothing or nobody take this from me. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all just don't know it. I promise y'all, y'all don't know my life. It's been there. I've been there. I've been all the way there. And I know he still ain't through. But he just made me strong. Now that when the devil come at me, oh, I already seen that. You got to come better than that to me because I've already been there. You, you can't touch me with that one. And I tell him that and I keep on moving. But today I'm doing Psalms 136 from 1 through 9. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks unto God, the God of gods, for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord of lords, for his mercy endures forever. To him whom alone do a great wonders, for his mercy endures forever. To him that by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endures forever. Sorry. To him that stretches out the earth above the waters, for his mercy endures forever. To him that made great lights, for his mercy endures forever. The sun to rule by day. For his mercy endures forever. The moon and the stars rule by night. For his mercy endures forever. Come on, let's give God a praise. Our praise and worship team is coming down. Come on, it's time to worship and give God some glory. Come on, put those hands together. Amen. We come to worship together. Amen. This is not a this is not a stage. This is not a show. Amen. Right. The Bible says, "Worship the Lord with me, and exalt and let us exalt His name." What together? Yeah. Amen. Look at them. They say it's worship time. Come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good to be in the house of the Lord one more day, amen? Hallelujah, that's what we came to do. Praise and worship Jesus, for he is worthy. Amen, y'all pray for us, because it's just me and Sister Angel. Thank God she came to sing, amen? We all lift our voice in one accord, amen? Come on.
Amen. Come on, let's give God a hand of praise in this place on this morning. Good morning. Good morning. morning. It's good to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Always a pleasure to see my sister, Sister Sarah, in the house. All right. Amen. And we go way back. Amen. Amen. I remember her. Amen. In high school. I think we both were quiet kind of people, but uh, I do remember her. And when I saw her, I knew her. She didn't know me. I guess I had put on some weight since I had some age since I first, she first saw me last. But I, I, I knew her immediately. I said, that girl there is one of my classmates in high school yeah. and immediately knew her name. I said, are you Sarah? She looked at me funny. I said, yeah, I'm Sarah, who are you? I said, I'm Leslie. She said, oh, I remember you now. I have, I wasn't the most outspoken person in high school wasn't popular. In fact, you didn't even know I existed unless I said something. Uh, but it's just sort of interesting that being popular in high school doesn't always mean you're going to be popular in life. All right. yeah. But but I thank God for ha having one of my classmates here. Amen. amen. As a part of of this ministry. Let's give amen. God a praise. Amen. And I uh, just want to just thank you for showing up. Amen. All of you in the house of the Lord. Look at your neighbors. It's good to be here. It's good to be here. Amen. Let's declare our six statements of faith by lifting our hands and declaring by faith. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Come on, let's say it with conviction. I'm healed in the name of Jesus. I'm prosperous in the name of Jesus. I'm favored in the name of Jesus. I'm delivered even though I'm going through in the name of Jesus. I'm wealthy in finances even though I'm broke in the name of Jesus. I'm victorious in the precious name of Jesus. Somebody give God some praise. Amen. Before you. Take your seat. Let us get our familiar scripture. First Kings chapter 15, verse number nine. And the title again of this series, which continues to continue on, amen, is the year 2020. And we added a suffix to it, Mother Gamble, when the world changed. Right. The year 2020, when the world changed. Change First Kings chapter 15, verse number 9 through 14. If you have it, say, I have it. I have it. Let us read. And in the 20th year of Jeroboam, king of Israel, reigned Asa over Judah. And 41 years reigned he in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Micah, the daughter of Abishalom. And Asa did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord, as did David his father. And he took away the Sidonites out of the land and removed all the idols that his fathers had made. And also Micah and his mother, even her, he removed from being queen because she had made an idol in a grove. And he said, destroy her idol and burn it by the brook Kedron. But the high places were not removed. Nevertheless, Asa's heart was perfect with the Lord all of his days. I don't have a drum roll this morning, but that's all right. If you will be so inclined, ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome with immense pleasure and distinct honor. Yeah, I got somebody I thought. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God in this place. Let's give Jesus a hand of praise for showing up in our midst on this morning. You ought to look up toward heaven and say, Welcome, Holy Spirit. Come out and give God a praise in the house. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. As we continue to mention, we are practicing our social distance procedures and techniques. If you make contact with anyone, please do so 
by Evo Bob, we will be practicing those social distancing throughout the remainder of our services until further notice. Despite the call for social distancing, voices are rising up in the streets around the world. The voices of men and women, young and old, black and white, are, are heard now in the streets calling for racial justice primarily for the African-American experience. There is and always have been, Brother Jamal, a racial divide in America. All right. We as the children of God must also raise our voices. It is time for us to call for repentance from sin. Sometimes we are quiet in our own homes knowing that our children are not saved. Yeah. Sometimes we are silent in our own homes knowing that our grandchildren need Jesus. Yeah. Right. Listen, it's not the time to be silent. Amen. I got one amen. Mm -hmm. it's, it's time to lift our voice like a trumpet. Yes. Uh, it was the prophet Isaiah said in Isaiah 58 and 1, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, show my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. This is our time, our time to make an indelible mark, an unforgettable mark on our society for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right. I would hate to be in heaven wishing that I had done more. I would hate to be in heaven with a, with a conscious knowing that I could have told somebody else about Jesus, but chose not to. But I want to be in heaven, said I've done all I can do, amen, to win the loss. Hallelujah. Paul said, I kept the faith. I, I've done it, amen. Now there is a crown of righteousness awaiting me. This is our time, saints, to make an indelible mark on our society for the gospel of Jesus Christ. I, I believe that one of the reasons why the church has been silent. I believe one of the reasons why the church has been silent on contemporary issues, and I believe that one of the reasons that we have been silent on social issues is, is lack of identity. I didn't say loss of identity. I said lack of identity. We fail to truly realize who we are in God. I heard uh, uh, Deacon Deacon uh, Eddie talk about it is our commission, it is our duty, it is our assignment. We fail to truly recognize who we are in God. Yeah. As a child of God, you were created to be an overcomer. All right. Mm -hmm. your, your birth in Christ, I didn't say your birth in 1962, but, but your birth in Christ, when you were born again, your birth in Christ gave birth to a new creation. All right. uh, uh, we often say, you know, we quote that scripture, 2 second, second Corinthians 5, 17, therefore if any man be in Christ, but, but, but that word creation means a new species. You're not the same person you were. Right. Listen, listen, your birth in Christ give birth to a new creation. You became a new creature. Yeah. As a new creature, your life was made for victory. Somebody yeah. say victory. I know, I know that you thought nothing changed, but everything changed when you accepted Jesus. As a new creature, your life was made for what? For victory. Somebody say victory. Paul described a believer as one who is more than a conqueror. This world, listen here, I know we say we are in the world but not of the world, but I want you to know this world was created for you. Amen. Come on now. Oh, Look, Sinead, I'm a part of the world, part of the world. Even, though I'm not of the world. even though I'm not of the world. How can that be? Listen, this world was made and belongs to you. Take, take ownership of your possession. That's the part of the reason I, I, we have lack of identity because we don't know that this world was made for you and I. Listen, God gave Adam and Eve the earth and 
a time of perfect fellowship with God before they sinned against God. They lost their dominion on the earth due to the sin of disobedience. Isn't that right? Yes. Anybody ever read the scripture? Amen. Listen, did you know that all planets in our solar system are named after gods and, and, and goddesses except Earth? Amen. Earth is the only planet not named after some god or goddess. Earth is named after someone, but it's not a god. All right. What's the name? What, what earth, earth name? Listen, there is another name that means earth, and it's the name Adam. All right. Adam is named after the planet earth. Adam means earth. God gave Adam and Eve an entire planet. Amen. Here we go. <laughs> what is he preaching? I don't understand what he's preaching. One man and his wife, whose wife came from him, was given a whole planet. Imagine your duties and responsibilities during the millennium and, 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 and throughout eternity. You're going to be in charge. That's why you got to get responsibility down now. That's why you got to listen. God would not trust you uh, with responsibilities uh, if you haven't been responsible on the earth now. This is one of the reasons why that, 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 that whatever you do, you ought to do it wholeheartedly for God. If you if you can be trusted with little, oh Jesus, you're gonna be entrusted with much. The problem is we won't take responsibility for anything. And yet we want to rule with God. You're not going to. You may be saved, but you're not gonna be one of the rulers that reign with him. You can be saved and, and, and it go to and it spend heaven in eternity and in the earth and during the millennium and all that stuff, but you will not be one of those chosen who's going to have rulership in the universe Amen. because you chose not to take responsibility for the things where you was living on the earth. Amen. Uh, get after somebody else. Uh. I don't need that. I'm just happy sitting in the pews just, just as long as I'm saved. <laughs> in fact, in the beginning, in the beginning, both the man and the woman were called Adam. All right. By God. Uh, it go, uh, in Genesis chapter 5, verse 2. Let, let's go back. In Genesis, let's go back to the beginning. In Genesis chapter 5, verse 2, the Bible says, man, male and female created he them and blessed them. Anybody see that in Galatians? I mean, not Galatians, but Genesis chapter 5, verse 2. He says, male and female created he what? He them and what? And blessed. That's good right there. Somebody say blessed. And blessed them and called their name what? Your name wasn't Yvette. It was Adam. All right. Your name wasn't what, Kawana. Is that right? That's right. <laughs> Kawana. It was Adam. Your name wasn't Sarah. It was Adam. And then it says, and they, they called their name Adam in the day when they were what? When they were created. God saw Adam and Eve as both what? One. The man was Mr. Adam. And the woman was Mrs. Adam. Not Mr. Adam and Mr. Adam. Not Mrs. Adam and Mrs. Adam. Oh, Y'all don't know where I'm coming with that. But Mr. Adam and Mrs. Adam. Furthermore, 
it was the man who gave the woman the name Eve. All right. Uh, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 20, it says, And Adam called his wife. He said, you know, because sometimes when they call Adam, I don't know which one he's talking about. Is he talking about me? Is he talking about the, the woman? He says, I got I, I to make some separation here. And in Genesis chapter 3, verse 20, it says, And Adam called his wife's name, what? Eve, Eve because she was mother. the mother of all living. God gave Adam and Eve the earth to rule over it. And I'm making a point here. Because sometimes we, we we say, well, that's not for us. I know the, the you know, I know that God blessed them with how, but but I'm a, I'm a child of God, so I don't I don't I, this is not mine to inherit. That's a lie. God gave Adam and Eve the earth to rule over it. Adam and Eve was given rulership and dominion over the entire earth. The planet was for them. To rule over as God ruled over heaven. Let's go to scripture. Let's, where's that found? Go, let's go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 28 through 30. Here is the dominionship. Here is the rulership. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 28 through 30, and it says, And God blessed them. You find blessing all the way through when it comes around to creation of Adam and Eve. All right. Look, your name says, The blessing of the Lord are upon you. Sometimes we don't think we, we should be blessed. Sometimes we, we shun blessings and prosperity because of, of a bad image someone has portrayed in our head. But it's not, the, it's not, that's, not that's not what God wants for you. And it says, and God blessed them and God said unto them, this is the blessing here, be fruitful and what? Multiply. Multiply. We're going to have Sunday school this morning and replenish the earth. And subdue it. That means to take control over anything that is out of line. He's supposed to control. The Adam and Eve was supposed to take dominion over and, and, and rulership. And have what? Dominion. Notice what it says. Over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the first. But now with everything that's in the earth is, is yours which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree is yours, and that which is the fruit of the tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for your meat. In other words, they didn't eat cows and, and, and sheep. They only ate herbs and, and fruit. This was, man was not a meat eater. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. the, right? the, the fruit was his meat. Right. And to every beast of the of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every her green herb for meat, for meat, and it was what it was so. Man was created to rule. It is a part of his creative nature. Man was cr created to rule. It's, when I say man, I mean Mrs. Adam as well as Mr. Adam. Man was created to rule. It is a part of his creative nature. He was created for dominion. When Christ died on the cross and rose again, we received our dominionship back. Look, I'm trying to tell you who you are in Christ. You have an identity and it's connected to dominionship. It's connected to rulership. Listen, when, that, when Christ died on the cross, rose from the dead, we receive our dominionship. The Bible says that now we, 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 we are right to be uh, called the sons of God. We receive our dominionship back. Christ did not die for dominion for himself. He already had dominion. He did not die for dominion over death. He already had dominion over death. I'm making a point here. Christ did not die for dominion over the grave. He already had dominion over the grave. Lazarus is a perfect example of Jesus having dominion over death and the grave after Lazarus had been in the grave for four days. Christ's death on the cross and victory over the grave as a man was for our benefit as man. Amen. It wasn't for his benefit. He was already God. 
He could command anything and it would obey. It wasn't for him. Christ died and rose with the keys of death, hell, and the grave was for our benefit. Christ's victory over death, hell, and the grave as man ensured and certified our victory over death, hell, and the grave. Let's go to Romans chapter 6. Let me show you what I'm talking about. In Romans chapter 6, verse 3 through 5, sometimes we say, well, you know, Christ died and now he has all power. He didn't die to get all power. He had all power. <laughs> Oh, he through his death he got power. No, he was already he was already God. The Bible said he thought it not robbery to be equal with God. In other words, he was already in the form of God in glory. He didn't die for himself. He died for you. You're right. Romans six three, Romans chapter six verse three through five, and said, "No, ye not." Here, Paul asked the question. He said. He said, I just want to make sure you understand who you are. Amen. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus, into Jesus Christ, were baptized unto his death. What is he saying? He's, Christ is saying, Paul is saying, Christ's death was for our benefit. Know what he says now. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Christ were baptized unto his death. Christ's death was for our benefit. Then it says, therefore we were buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was baptized, was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. In other words, Christ rose for our benefit. And then it says, as if we for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be what? Also in the likeness of his resurrection. The resurrection of Christ was not what was was not for him, it was for us. Listen, if it, if he did, if the resurrection of Christ was for him, why did he die in the first place? The resurrection of Christ was 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 for us, not for Christ. All right. I'm gonna say it again. He was already in glory. Yeah. He was already in the form of the Father. Yeah. The, 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 the resurrection of Christ was for us, not for him. If it was for him, why would he die in the first place? He was he, he was living eternal in heaven. Jesus did not die to benefit himself. All right. He died for you and me. Amen. Jesus did not rise from the dead to benefit himself. Mm -hmm. He rose from the dead for you and me. Amen. Jesus did it just for me. Amen. He did it just for you. Wow. Upon three days in the grave. Yeah. Jesus could have Listen to me. I don't know if you ever thought about it. But upon his, upon his three days in the grave, Jesus could have gone from the underworld back to heaven. But he chose to rise from the dead back to earth. Something he wants to show you. He could have went after he had got the keys from hell and earth. He could have hit immediately back, amen, to the gates of heaven. But he chose to rise from the dead on the earth for a witness Amen. to you. Amen. That as he rose from the grave, you too shall rise from the grave. As Christ rose from the dead back to earth, we too shall rise from the dead back to earth. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to show you. You say, oh, I'm a, when I rise, I'm going to be in heaven. No, that ain't scripture. You rising back to the, to the earth. You rising back to, uh, to earth. The Bible says 
In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17, we know the scripture. Every time we often hear this during, during funeral times and other places, in 1, 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17, says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. When he says descend from heaven, it means that he's descending back to earth. Amen? Amen. Notice what it says. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven, what? With the shout and with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ, what? Shall rise first. Those who have gone on, they're not going to rise up in, in, in heaven. Heaven has no graveyards. They will rise up on the earth. Listen. Arise uh, uh, shall rise first. Then we which are alive. Everybody is not going to be dead when Christ comes back. But we all shall be changed. As a moment and as a twinkling of an eye, we will put on uh, uh, immortality for mortality. Listen. Luke said, but we all, but we all shall be changed. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then which we which are alive shall remain and remain shall be what? Caught up together with me to, with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall ever be with the Lord. As proof of his resurrection, Jesus was seen alive for 40 days on the earth before ascending back to the Father in heaven. Fall of sin. Amen. The Bible says in Romans 8 and 1, we know the scripture, there is therefore now 
No condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. When, when the enemy comes and says, Sister Haywood did this, Sister Haywood said this, it was Dr. Gamma who did this on last week. God said, not guilty. Which they said, not guilty. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And this is the part I like. It said, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. I'm no longer bound by the law of sin. I've been made free by the spirit of life. Somebody give God a praise for setting you free. Look at your name and say, now you know who you are. Now, now you know, know who you are. Man, in his state before the fall, was created to multiply. All right. He was created to increase. He was created to replenish the earth. Not to decline. All right. Not to decrease. And not to diminish. Moreover, prosperity abundance and the accumulation of wealth is the natural order of man. Prosperity, multiplication, abundance, and the accumulation of wealth is the natural order of man. The first blessing God bestowed upon man was to be fruitful. Did we just read that? Yes. Multiply and what? Replenish. And the second blessing was just as more powerful. And he shall have dominion over the faith of the earth. Two blessings you got at the same time. Yes. One was increase. One was prosperity. And the other was dominion. The second blessing, man was ordained and granted to have dominion. Listen, it is not sinful to desire increase. All right. It's part of your creative nature. Amen. I want to be blessed. Ooh, you want to know? No, 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 no. It's a part of who I am as a child of God. It is not sinful to desire to prosper. Amen. It is a part of your natural order instituted and ordained by God. God placed the desire to be fruitful in you. He placed the design. If somebody tell you they don't want to be back, they lie. Hallelujah. How can you be, how can you not desire blessings when you desire Jesus? Because he bless you. He is our blesser. He is our deliverer. He is our savior. If that ain't blessed, I don't know what is. not sinful All right. to desire prosperity. God placed the desire to be to, for us to be fruitful and to multiply and replenish. He placed that desire in you. It is a part of our creative DNA. Amen. And to say it's not is against your very nature. Amen. This is what John said Concerning prosperity. He said in, in 3 John 1 and 2. Beloved I wish. Above all things. That thou mayest what? Prosper. And be in health. Even as thy soul prosper. It is the will of God. For you to prosper. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> uh, it's going to be hard in here today. God's definition of prosperity is not $20 million. All right. I just met somebody else. That's all we talk about money. Listen here. God's definition. Somebody say God's definition. God's definition. God's definition of prosperity is not 10 Mercedes in your garage. All right. You whirly. You, you off track. God's definition, listen, of prosperity means to be made whole, nothing broken. If you're broke, 
something's broken. Because it's not God's will. It's not God's way. Look to your neighbor you got to know who you are. And when you know who you are, tell me, when you know who you are, you can believe for the right things. Listen here. Somebody said made whole, not broken. Health, not broken. Somebody say prosperity. Prosperity. Prosperity go more than just five dollars in your pocket. Amen. Listen, prosperity is not a man's idea. All right. It's a God's idea. Yes, it is. Uh, you know those prosperity preachers. No, no, no. Prosperity is not a man's idea. It's a God's idea. All right. It is the will of God. For you to prosper. Then. Why would you not. Want it for yourself. Amen. Did we just read. 3 John 1 and 2. Beloved I wish above all things that thou may have what. If it's the will of God. For you to prosper. Then why would you want it for yourself. Amen. You cannot have. Listen. You cannot have a prosperous life. With a poverty mentality. Amen. Right. Amen. As a man thinketh in his heart. So is he. so is he. You cannot have a prosperous life with a poverty mentality. Amen. Right. The only way prosperity and healing and deliverance is going to come through. There has to be a transformation of the mind. Yeah. Right. This is why we come to church. So that our minds can be renewed according to who we are in Christ Jesus. Yes, you cannot have a prosperous life with a poverty slave mentality. All right. I would take a prosperity mentality. Over a poverty mentality in a day. Amen. I will take a prosperous mentality over a poverty mentality any day. I can't speak for you, but there has been times when my money was acting funny. There has been times where my change was acting strange. All right. Look at your neighbor and say, there has been some times when my money was acting funny. And my change was acting strange. A prosperous life is not what you see in Hollywood. All right, now. Eyes can be deceived. All right, a prosperous life is defined by being made whole. Amen. Body, mind, soul, health. Do you know that people with millions who sick? Yes. How can you be prosperous? Because prosperity means made whole. Right. The Bible says, and God healed them and made her whole. She began to prosper yeah. in every facet of their life. Look, they said, God wants to make you whole today. And God, God wants you to experience true prosperity. Listen here. A prosperous life is defined as whatsoever he do it shall prosper. All right. How many want to have it like that? You ain't got to raise your hand. I'll raise my hand for you. Listen. That's Psalms 1, chapter 1. That's Psalm chapter 1. Psalms 1 and 3 says, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth, can you imagine everything you put your hands to? Talk to you put your hand on a dollar bill and it increases to 10. Whatsoever she do it, shall what? Shall prosper. Look today, so I got to have it like that. I got to have it. Listen, uh, I've said this before. You can never birth out that which you don't believe in. All right. What comes in will go out. Uh-uh. What 
if, 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 if a seed goes into the womb of a woman, it will come out. Y'all right. still ain't got it yet. You can never birth out that which you don't believe in. So if you don't believe in the blessings of God, it will never be birthed out of you. Those who believe that God wants them to prosper yeah. shall prosper. Yes. No ifs and buts about it. Yeah, all right. Now, if that's not what God's intent for you, then Jeremiah 29 and 11 is wrong. All right. Because this is what Jeremiah 29 and 11 says that God thoughts concerning you. Concerning your, your past, your present and your what? And your future. Listen to what he says concerning your future. Uh -huh. Jeremiah 29 and 11. It says, God said, for I know the plans I have for you. Yes. Declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you. Uh -huh. If that don't get it, I don't know. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. To give you a hope and a future. God is interested in your prosperity. Yes. Even in the midst of a famine. Yes. Even in the midst of a pandemic. Yes. God wants to show that he can bless you in spite of what the world is experiencing. Yes. I wish I had somebody who believed God in him. Yes. God and sister said otherwise he would have never said that my plan for you is to prosper you. That's found in the NIV version of Jeremiah 29 and 11. It says, God said, I know the plans I have for you. This God said, this is what I want for you. I'm interested in your prosperity. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. God is interested in your prosperity. Why does God wants us to prosper? That'll be the next question. All right. Because it's not all about you. You're right. It's about helping somebody else. Yes. We are not blessed just to be a blessing. No. We are blessed so that we can be a blessing to someone else. You're right. And the reason why God will sometimes withhold the blessing because he knows your heart. Yes. Uh -oh. Because he wants us to be a channel, yes. a conduit by which the blessings come for those who are less fortunate. And how can God trust you with, with prosperity when the only thing that you would do is hoard what you've given? That's why tithes and offers is so important because it's a trial, it's a test by which we, God knows your heart that if you can't pay a dollar from ten dollars, you're not going to. Lord bless me, Lord bless me. Be for real. Tithes and offers is simply a test of your obedience when All it right. comes to prosperity. Yes. If you can't handle tithes and offers, you can't handle millions, baby. You're right. Did you know that Rockefeller, Western House, all of those people that, that even though they're dead and they're gone, that their legacy and their business still thrush, yes. thrive. They were tithers. Yes. You're right. What Chase Bank? What? What's the name of that? Uh, who's that guy with Chase Bank? Uh, uh, forgot his name. Uh, he was one of the wealthiest, wealthiest people back in the early 1900s. He was a faithful tither and had been tithing. Since he was 15 years old. All right. And he learned from his mother. Son, whatever you get, you put 10 cents. If you want to be blessed, you put 10% 10, 10 of it to God. He practiced that and became a multi-billionaire. All right. Because God could trust him with a little. He used to make 50 cent a day and he put five, five, five cent to the tithe. 
If God can, Lord bless me. God said, I'm trying to, I'm trying to bless you. I ain't giving that man my money. You're not. Lord bless me. Lord, I want, I want to be a millionaire. God said, show me. Amen. Prove me. Then he said that in Malachi 3. Prove me that will what I want. But you gotta prove God. I ain't paying nothing. Yeah. <laughs> stay in the same state. <laughs> Look at your name say, he ain't talking about me. He ain't talking about me. God is interested in your prosperity. All right. Why does God want us to prosper? That's a very profound question. Because, listen, because we are more like God when we prosper. Amen. Our God is a God of prosperity. Yes, he is. Not poverty. Amen. It pleases God when you're blessed. Yes. I'm going to show you a scripture. It pleases God when you're healthy. All right. It pleases God when you're fruitful. Amen. I mean, you say, you know, I don't know why my mama had 10 children. It pleases God Amen. to be fruitful. Yes. Uh, Y'all don't understand what I'm saying. Living in a state of prosperity puts God in a state of pleasure concerning you. I'm going to say it again. Living in a state of prosperity put God in a state of pleasure Concerning you. Let's go to Psalms 35 and 27. Check this out. We read the scripture. Sometimes we don't read it well enough. In Psalm 35 and 27, get, get quickly. Psalm 35. It's located in the middle of the Bible. Psalm, book of Psalm 35, verse 27. Listen to the psalmist concerning God's pleasure when you're blessed. Let them shout for joy. Anybody got that? Yes. Let them what? Shout. shout for joy. What are they shouting for? And be glad that favor my righteous cause, God said. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord what? Be, be magnified. Now check this out. Let the Lord be magnified or enlarged, which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Listen, it brings God pleasure when you're blessed and prosperous, not when you're broke. Oh, God's just happy with me right now. I ain't got my, 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 my bills are caught low, my lights are turned off. No, he's not. Who told you that? <laughs> I'm just like God now. Who told you that? All right. Let the Lord be magnified. In other words, let, let the Lord be glorified, which had pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. The more you prosper, listen, as a child of God, why am I talking about prosperity on the time of a famine? Because the word, the word of the Lord is for you today. The more you prosper, as a child of God, the more pleasure God receives. All right. The more you prosper as a child of God, the more pleasure God receives. On the other hand, my time for me to go, oh, Sister Tasha, thank you for giving me the bell. <laughs> on, on the other hand, in America, the shouts, he says, let them shout for joy. But in America, on the other hand, shouts of dissension is what we hear. Shouts of discontent. All right. Shouts of rioting are the order of the day. We are facing problems on every side. However, listen. Problems are often doors for opportunities. 
I have never seen my wife so anxious about making money than during the coronavirus. All right. Guess what she's doing right now? Making face mask. They calling the they, her phone is burning up. Problems are often doorways for opportunities. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's so bad. I can't find a job. Problems are often doorways to opportunities. Problems are often windows of opportunities hidden incognito, hidden in disguise. And we need to have understanding that even though the world is going through a tri trial and tribulation, this is our time to prosper. Amen. Said, this is the right season. This is the right season. To be blessed. To be blessed. In fact, I hear you, Mother Gamma. In fact, God often creates, He often creates unique problems in order to generate divine solutions. This virus didn't take God by mistake. It caught us off guard. But it didn't catch him off guard. Listen, God often creates unique problems in order to generate divine solutions. God gave Pharaoh a dream, a unique problem. If I remember that, God gave Pharaoh a dream, a unique problem that no one could interpret. Somebody say a unique problem. unique problem. The coronavirus is a unique problem that there is no solution as of yet. Listen. God gave Pharaoh a dream, a unique problem that no one could interpret no one but Joseph. All right. That is. Only Joseph could interpret Pharaoh's dream that was the divine solution. God often creates unique problems in order to generate what? Divine solutions. Uh, 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 one last, I'm mean, one last scripture. It's time for us to go, but one last scripture. One last scripture. Somebody get me Genesis 41, 14 through 16. Genesis 41. I'm going to pick it back on this on the next service. Genesis 41, verse 14 through 16. This is not the end of it. If you, don't, if you want to hear the conclusion of the, of the matter, come back in 30 minutes. Genesis chapter 41 through 14 through 16. 40, 14 through 16. If you have it, say I have it. I have it. Genesis chapter 41, verses 14 through 16. Then Pharaoh sent. Anybody see that? Yeah. And called who? Joseph. Called Joseph. And they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. And he shaved himself. Look at there and said, it's time for an interview. It's time for an interview. My, my, my son is going for an interview uh, tomorrow. And uh, I think he looked too old to be, he could be working. But anyway, uh, he's going for an interview tomorrow. He he went and got a haircut. He shaved himself on um, yesterday. Uh, and then the Bible says that that Joseph shaved himself. Look at there and he was getting ready for the interview. He's getting, getting ready for an interview. That's gotta be a hit to somebody. Said, I can't find a job. You need to go on your interview. Listen here. Uh, uh, I'm on social media. Thank you. Thank you for recording that. <laughs> and, and he shaved himself. Don't, don't, don't go down. You, you ain't took a bath. You, you need, you need. Don't do that. He, he knew his time. He, he knew that this was his time. In his spirit, he, he knew uh, that uh, Sister Chilla, that he was his time. So, so he demonstrated his faith by. Actions. He he shaved and say he said I'm a little I'm a, I got some stubble stubs, stubs everywhere. Let me go ahead and put on a t-shirt. Let me walk me let me let me take a bath. I ain't took a bath in a few days. Let me take a bath so I can go on this interview because uh, I need to shave myself so I can look my best. He he, he shaved himself and changed his what? His rank, you know he he's a little he's a little, he's a little uh, he changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. 
And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none. Remember, God often creates problems in order to generate divine solutions. Notice what he said. And there is none that can interpret it. Lord right. Jesus. This is the perfect time for you. I'm trying to tell uh, Ellen Jackson. I'm trying to tell him that this is the perfect time to be blessed. And there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of thee that thou can't understand a dream to interpret it. And Joseph, Joseph looked and said, no, no, King, I can't do it. Only God can do that. He gave glory to God. Notice what he said. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, it is not in me. In other words, it is not within my power. I don't have the ability to interpret, but I know somebody who does. That's what he was saying. That's what he meant by it is not in me. He didn't have the power within himself. And then he says what? God shall give Pharaoh an answer peace. What does that mean? That means God is going to give Pharaoh a favorable interpretation of the dream. So he already knew, Father Gamble, that it would be a favorable why? Because he knows that this is his time for God to favor him. All right. He wasn't worried about the dream being a negative thing. He knew that the fact that God, just that this was his time for favor, that favor was going to come after this. It was, it was going to be, it was going to be favorable. The dream was going to be favorable because he knew that this was his season a favor. You got to know that this is a season of favor for you. I said this at the beginning of the year and even, and even before the pandemic started. I told you this is our season of favor. Didn't I say that? And, and then the, the pandemic came and then you, then you said Pastor was wrong about that. This ain't no plan. This ain't no favor. This is because God creates unique we often want a miracle, don't we? I don't know about you, but I do. But in order for a miracle to come to pass, that got to be something, that's got to be a unique problem for God. God is not going to work a miracle and man not know it. Because when man's extremities is God's opportunity, when the woman with the issue of blood, we call it a miracle because the doctors couldn't kill her. There was a man at the gate called Beautiful. She, he had been laid out of his mother's womb and could not stand. We call miracles miracles because they come, they, they are due to unprecedented, unique problems. That's why we call it a miracle. Because it's something man can't do. Right. This is your season. I'm closing. This is your season of miracles. Amen. If you believe it, give God some praise. And everything that was said today is of God. This is your season of favor. Who am I preaching? I'm preaching to somebody here. It might be on social media because I don't know if you're receiving it here. But this is your season of breakthrough. That which has been holding you back. Look your name, so I'm, I'm free now, I'm free now. Thank God I'm free. The, the, the song said, no longer bound. No chains holding me. Uh, well, well, praise God, I'm free. How, how it go? I'm free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. No longer bound. No more chains holding me. My soul is resting. It's such a... A blessing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm free. If this word has been a blessing to you, we want you to give. Remember, God is proven. You got to prove.